the most incredible thing has happened. This is a sponsored video. It is sponsored by Intel and it is the year 2025. But guess what? They don't have a bunch of nonsense AI talking points. Incredible, I know, because we have the new Intel 200 H series and it actually looks pretty good. So let's have a look at her. To show off this new processor, Intel has sent over the Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5, which as far as I can tell from the spec, she is a very capable little beast. I don't know why I said little, it's actually pretty big. That's a pretty sparse box. We just get the laptop, a charger. We don't even get a little quick start guide that tells us to plug it in and turn it on. Unbelievable. Ugh. All right, this is probably going to be a powerful boy because we have a 100 watt charger, which is being delivered over USB-C, which I absolutely love. There are so many other laptops that come with nonsense magnetic chargers that cannot connect to your phone and everything else that you own. And getting a 100 watt USB-C charger is sick. Looking at the device itself, it is very, uh, laptop looking, but I do really like this finish. We have an aluminum cover, and if I go and smear my greasy old hands all over it, it's actually rejecting the fingerprints really quite well. Look at that. Looking at the IO, we have full-size SD card reader, two USB type A's on the left side, HDMI 2.1, two Thunderbolt 4s, and 3.5 millimeter audio. Now it should be noted that the 200H series is capable of doing Thunderbolt 5, but from what I have heard from laptop manufacturers, you need to have your own little chip to support that, and Lenovo has not done that in this case, which, oh well. Very few things support that at the moment. I noticed that the power button's on the side here, which normally means it's convertible, but this doesn't look like a convertible. And it's not. Oh, here we go. I was saying that I missed the quick start guide, but we have it right here. So power connector. Also, it very clearly has turn on with opening the lid. And they also want you to sign up for their premium warranty. Wow. Oh wait, you can switch the refresh rate with just a button. One sec, one sec. Function R. 120 hertz, function R. 60 hertz, boo. 120 hertz, there we go. We're getting ahead of ourselves here though. How heavy is this thing? I'm thinking 3.9 pounds, 4.2 pounds. Actually, I'm going with 4.2 pounds as my final answer. Ah, oh, 3.8 pounds, which is very impressive for a laptop like this. And also what I guessed the first time and I should have stuck with it. Let's have a look at the build quality here. Here we have an all aluminum chassis that feels, I have to say, really quite good. I'm giving it quite a push here, but it is barely moving. That is very nice and solid. One thing that I also quite like is we don't just get a keyboard, but we also get a numpad. Does the quality of this chassis translate into a good typing experience though? So let's find out. Keyboard is fantastic. It has heaps of travel and also the keys are very consistent. And even though they do have a little bit of wiggle if you want to, it doesn't matter because there's so much travel and it's so far above the chassis that none of that matters. I'm going to give it a solid A. Down below the keyboard, we have our trackpad. It is glass topped. It feels really quite nice. Although it does have a traditional click mechanism instead of some of the fancy force touch ones that you will find on other Lenovo devices. In here for performance, we get the Intel Core Ultra 9 285H, which is the top of their new 200 series processor. This thing gets you 16 cores. And of those 16 cores, you get six performance, eight efficiency, and two low power efficiency to make sure that it doesn't just drain itself when you're doing very, very little things on battery. It also goes up to 5.4 gigahertz boost clock. And that is the main difference between the stack is the boost clocks until you get down to ultra fives, where you do lose two performance cores, bringing the total down to only 14. <laughs> For memory, we get 32 gigabytes. That's running at a blistering 8533 mega transfers per second. We also get a one terabyte Kyoxia and VME SSD, Intel Wi-Fi 7. I love to see that. I really, really appreciate Intel's Wi-Fi implementations. They are the best in my opinion. We also have our NPU, which only does 13 tops instead of the like 40, 50 that you need for a Copilot Plus certification. But that does not matter because we also have the Intel Arc 140T GPU. 
This has eight GPU cores. And in talking to Intel, they are basically like, we had to decide between whether or not we got the Copilot Plus certification or you got good gaming performance. And on this right here, they have dedicated that die space to the GPU, meaning that it games. Probably the most exciting thing about this GPU isn't just that they have raw performance increases, but they have also doubled the cache, which with any luck will help us with the sort of stuttering that I saw in some of the previous gen Intel Arc chips. And this one right here should be quite a bit more stable. Before we get into our comparisons, I just want to take a moment to shout out this display. It freaking rocks. This right here is an OLED panel and it is so bright that I have just blown out the overhead. I am really sorry, Andrew, but it goes up to 1100 nits. We measured it also that it goes up to 1080 nits in actual fact, and it keeps on going up to a 33% window at that brightness. Now, of course, if you have the entire display showing white, it goes down to 585 nits, which is not nearly as good as a thousand, but unless you're getting flash banged constantly, I don't think it's going to matter. It also has 100% coverage of DCI-P3, which we did confirm in our testing. There is no touch screen, but at the same time, I'm not super mad because I have seen so many OLED screens get completely ruined by a bad mismatch between the touchscreen digitizer and the OLED panel because they'll use a touchscreen digitizer that was made for LCD, put it on OLED and boom, it looks like crap. This right here certainly does not though. It only goes up to 500 nits with SDR, which is the standard. Max brightness, <laughs> damn. How the frick did they manage to get 1100 nits out of an OLED? Oh, there we go, look at that. You can't really tell on the camera too much, but the way that that sun is coming out of the clouds, man, it looks great. This being an Intel sponsored video, we're just going to be testing Intel versus older Intel specifically in this little Dell Inspiron right here, which has an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. We did our best to match the TDPs and the results, Intel improved it. Wow. In the games on average, the new processor is 20 to 25% faster than the old one, which is very excellent. In Cinebench, we also saw a 28% performance uplift in multi-core and almost just as impressive, the performance on this guy does not drop off when you have it on battery, at least in the performance mode on battery. Oh wait, what performance mode are we in? All right, function Q, cold mode, no. Battery saver mode, no, we're plugged in. Performance mode, there we go. There also is a geek mode, which gives you a little bit more power but we're not gonna be using that because you have to go into Lenovo software to get it and it sometimes makes it slower. All right, we're at 1800p, which is way higher than I would suspect that you should be doing on integrated graphics, but we're just gonna roll with it because we currently have 70 FPS, meaning that when I get scored on by bots here, it is my fault and not the computers. Uh, this is going really quite well, I have to admit. At this kind of a resolution, I was not expecting at all for it to be able to hold up, but it is. It looked great while doing it. Have I mentioned yet that I really like OLED panels? <laughs> I need to score. I'll do it right now. I have scored many times on short circuit and because this Intel powered laptop is so great. I did it once again. <laughs> For integrated graphics, it's great. And other times on Intel integrated graphics where I've had good frame rates, it has not been playable because the 1% lows have been trash, but they seem to have fixed that in this generation, at least in Rocket League. If you're not quite getting the frame rates that you want though, this also supports XCSS2. And we can see here that Cyberpunk is running 30% faster than last gen, thanks to the beefed up XMX engines. All right, let's have a look at the webcam here. To do a little peel. And also one thing that I really appreciate that Lenovo has included is a little switch for your webcam so that if you don't want people looking at you, they can't. All right, let's have a look at the webcam here. It is definitely grainy, but this 1080p webcam seems like it is able to compensate pretty well. This is very dark, very bright, but it is exposing for my face, even if it's a tiny bit blown out there. 
Moving around here, is it able to figure it out? I am not that white IRL. There we go. It might be February, but it's not that bad. Around here, yeah, it's doing a pretty decent job. I will say that this is an adequate webcam and you can judge the microphone with my voice right now. All right, let's give these speakers a bit of a sniff here. It says it has Dolby Atmos on it. Uh, Atmos requires speakers above you and behind you and normally nine of them. So I don't really know how we're gonna get Atmos out of this, but maybe they sound good. <laughs> It definitely sounds clear, but it also sounds like there's not going to be a whole lot of bass when it drums. I can tell in the snare drum there's not a lot of bass. That's not a good sign. It's okay, but it is definitely thin. There's not a whole lot going on in the low end with this at all. But at the same time, it isn't crushed. It isn't just like a bunch of nonsense vibrating, so... Maybe if we turn it down a bit, it'll... Nope, there's never any bass. But it's a laptop, what can you expect? Nine T5 screws later, which by the way, are not all the same length, so maybe put them in a little nice magnetic parts tray like you can in the LTT Precision Screwdriver set. And we are in, I think. Yeah, easy. Ow. Oh, there we go. <laughs> In here, we can see that the upgradability is about what you expect in 2025. The RAM, of course, is soldered. You can get nowhere near those kind of speeds with SODIMs. In here, we also have, uh, it's definitely normal size SSD right here. And if you want an actual full size one, there's another expansion spot right over here. Very nice. And down here, we also have an 84 watt hour battery, which in our testing was able to get us eight hours and 28 minutes of battery life. We did test that compared to the old one, and it turns out the Dell has much better battery life, but I don't think that is new gen Intel problems. It's this has an OLED screen problems, which takes a lot of battery. So I genuinely have no idea what this little board does. So if anyone in the comments can tell me, that would be greatly appreciated because I genuinely have no clue what it is. As spec'd, this Lenovo Idea Pad Pro 5 is 1500 US dollars, which is pretty good. You get plenty of RAM. That OLED display is fantastic. And you can look at it down in the link below if you wanna get one. Thank you so much to Intel for sponsoring this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you hit like, get subscribed and have a great old day. I'll see you in the next one.